hello guys and welcome to another one of my videos so in this video i wanted to talk about why sublime text is better than visual studio code now i know some people are gonna be mad at this video um but you just have to understand that this is my opinion and everybody's allowed to have their own opinions so in this video i wanted to tell you about why i think sublime text is much much better for me personally than visual studio code all right first of all first of all start of time when i turn on my laptop or computer i always like to just you know click on what i'm um, the editor i want to use launch it and you know start coding away so when you talk about start of time i'm just going to be enumerating this uh, start of time all right so start of time so like i said this is a very important point for me so i noticed that when i launch sublime text it just launches all right it doesn't take time it doesn't load it doesn't do anything it just launches and i'm ready to start coding or writing whatever it is i want to write okay now visual studio code on the other end actually takes a really really long time to start up my uh, the editor you know you know and then initialize the plugins and a bunch of other things like that another thing um i find annoying in visual studio code that i don't find inside of sublime text is that um, I like um, plugins management. I'm just gonna say management like that. Okay. I like the way Sublime Text manages its plugins. So, for example, the Sublime Text plugin management. I notice that when I'm using the um, Visual Studio Code, the Rust Analyzer plugin starts up even when I'm debugging JavaScript code or when I'm writing JavaScript code. That's in Visual Studio Code. And just to give you guys a, a really quick disclaimer i used both visual studio code and sublime text As you can see i have them here in my speed dial you know so it's not like i have anything against visual studio code but i'm just going to tell you why i like sublime text better for development and to be sincere to be honest i'm really thinking of moving most of my development work to sublime text and i know i'm going to be losing a lot of functionality a lot of things a lot of features that are in visual studio code but it's not in sublime text but really those features i find that i don't really need them that much and you know um they're really already provided some of them are already getting provided by sublime text and i can wait all right i mean sublime text is mostly free i mean i'm still unregistered as you can see if you want to register me just let me know so i can send you my account details and you can uh, you know you can work on that anyway so when it talks about plugin management i don't i don't really know why um Visual Studio Code allows you to uh, allows plugins to launch out of context. So, for example, the Rust Analyzer binary launches even when you don't have a Rust project open. It doesn't it doesn't really make any sense. I don't really know why. So, I wonder how many plugins launch in the background that you know, and all of those things adds up to the startup time of Visual Studio Code and you know a bunch of other nonsense that is not really relevant to the project. So. That's also one thing. It might be specific to the plugin, but I'm guessing that it's probably something that is allowed by Visual Studio Code and is not really properly moderated. I don't really know. But anyway, um, so th those those two reasons are one of the reasons why um, I like Sublime Text much better. Now, when you talk about um, the LSP support, now LSP support in this case um, for Visual Studio Code is much better. All right. Now, when I say much better, I don't really mean that um, Visual Studio um, Sublime Text doesn't really have a LSP support. Of course, it does. You can write uh, Linz in the uh, you know, you can write uh, most of your code in Sublime Text. I think the only thing the LSP in Sublime Text doesn't support is debugging. So that's probably one of the things that is lacking in. Um, but I find that that feature is not really something I use a lot because most of the time when I want to debug, you know, um, I think I only ever use Visual Studio Code for debugging when I have. Um, when I'm using something like, um, you know, Flutter, that's the only time I use I debug in Visual Studio Code. And even in Flutter, I don't really debug a lot like that. So I can actually do without debugging inside of Visual Studio Code for Sublime instead of Sublime Text, and I can still work. I can debug in, um, you know, Terminal for uh, Flutter, so that also still works. Now, so LSP support for me. Um, when I talk, when you talk about LSP support, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly going to be looking at something like, um, speed. All right. 
So for speed, I think Sublime Text is much better, all right? Sublime Text is much better in terms of speed, which means, you know, when you want to um, do stuff, when you want to, um, how am I gonna put this? Um, so when you start up your editor and you want to start coding, you want to start getting code completion and a bunch of other things like that, and you don't have to wait for the plugins to initialize the language servers to, you know, put things together and before they start working, um, I find that Sublime Text is extremely fast in that regard. You know, everything just gets started up and I'm ready to go, right? So maybe the full LSP support might be in Visual Studio Code, but I find that there's some of those uh, features that I don't really need and just wastes a lot of my time, all right? Now, when we talk about plugins in general, of course, Sublime Text has it's got way more, more better and much more advanced plugins for uh, uh, in terms of development, all right? But when you talk about Rust, now, the interesting thing about this is that Rust Analyzer, I think, is a plugin that was made for Visual Studio Code, and it was a, it, I think it was as a result of that the Rust Analyzer project came out. But the interesting thing is that the Rust support in Sublime Text is much, much better than the Rust support inside of Visual Studio Code, and I'm, I'm really serious about this, okay? I mean, I've used Visual Studio Code for uh, writing code that is written in Rust, and uh, I'm writing Rust code, and trust me, there's a lot of things that I'm missing. Most of the time, my Rust code just works in Sublime Text, all right? Um, and I recently just found this um, um, plugin that even allows even more Rust Analyzer features, and I'm gonna be exploring that in subsequent videos, but right now, the Rust support in Sublime Text is much better. They both use Rust Analyzer, by the way, so I don't really know why. Sometimes when I'm using Rust Analyzer in Visual Studio Code, I don't get errors, all right? I write programs that don't have, um, I write programs that actually don't um, that, that don't have imports. You know, when I when I write something like uh, uh, maybe I wanted to use mutex for example, and I'm using the mutex and I'm, and I don't get errors that the mutex has not been imported until I try to compile my program, which is really annoying. But all of those things are not um, available or are not present inside of Sublime Text, and that's one of the reasons why I love Sublime Text, and I think it's much better than. Uh, you know, Visual Studio Code in my case, all right? Like I said, so um, Visual Studio Code is a really, really great, um, you know, code editor or text editor, whatever you want to call it. And um, now, lastly, I have an issue with the binary, or let me just say memory. Now, not th speaking of download size, comparing the download size of Sublime Text to the um, Visual Studio Code, the size is not even comparable, right? Visual um, Sublime Text is much, much smaller than um, so, um, than Sublime Text is much smaller than Visual Studio Code, and the reason for that is simple, all right? Visual Studio Code has a lot of uh, you know things like I think is I think it uses Electron, you know, which uses the browser and a bunch of other things like that, which we're gonna we're not gonna get into in this video, but I'm, I will definitely talk about them in subsequent videos, all right? So Sublime Text is much faster. Um, you know, because it's as a small binary, and that's one of the issues I have with Visual Studio Code. I find that if I'm writing my Dart code, if I'm writing my Flutter code, and I'm running it, uh, you know, uh, in parallel to writing the code in Visual Studio Code, my laptop actually hangs up. And it's crazy because I left um, IntelliJ and uh, Android Studio to Visual Studio Code because of memory issues. And the interesting aspect or the interesting part of everything is that Visual Studio Code uses roughly the same amount of memory as IntelliJ and or Android Studio. And that's really crazy. And that's why I decided, you know, I decided to keep looking and then I found Sublime Text and I was like, oh my god, the memory usage of Sublime Text is just amazing. I think Sublime Text using the least amount of memory is one of the biggest advantages of Sublime Text over um, Visual Studio Code. Because sometimes you might be writing a program that uses a lot of memory, that's CPU intensive or whatever, and you don't really want a text editor or an IDE that is using roughly the same amount of memory as your resource-hungry program. I mean, when your text editor is resource-hungry and you also have a program or you're debugging something that's also resource-hungry, that's just crazy, all right? So, these, uh, this is one of the uh, major issues why I like to use Sublime Text, you know, over Visual Studio Code. Now, I feel like all of these points, I think they're not much, but trust me, they're good enough for me, and that's the reason why I like Sublime Text. That's why I think Sublime Text is much, much better, much, much better for me 
in development than Visual Studio Code. Now, like I said, there's a lot of features in Visual Studio Code that is not available to Sublime Text. A lot of them, too, too many to name. Uh, but, you know, like I said, Sublime Text is good enough for me. And I really love it. And I think I'm going to be using it a lot from now henceforth. Um, it's got everything I need. Language support for almost every language in existence, you know, uh, that I will ever work with. And if you know, and, and there's no language, it's pretty easy to add a language support using the Sublime LSP package. And that's just it. Anyway, that'll be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.